if you choose this type of camera and place it somewhere in the room, you risk making this error when your camera is put at 90 degrees in the wrong view. And this will make your render incorrect. So now let me show you how to do this without re-rendering the scene. But the problem is you can't just go and upload your panorama to Facebook. Why? Because Facebook won't identify it as a 360 degree image. So that's why we'll have to change the metadata. Hello everyone, this is Render Courses, and in this video I'll show you a very easy way to create a 360 degree panorama in Corona Render and 3ds Max. So let's get started. First things first, we go to 3ds Max, and here we have a pretty simple scene that we did for one of our clients. And we're gonna do things gradually, step by step, and first of all, we need to create and set up a Corona camera for panorama render. Okay, so we go to top view and we go ahead and create a new camera in the center of the room. So we go to create, cameras, select Corona camera, and let's place it here in the center and point it in a random direction. The direction doesn't matter because our camera won't be targeted. So next, we go to the Modify tab to set up the camera for the correct render. Uncheck Targeted. And take note that I added the camera on top view and I can see where the camera is looking. So if we created a panoramic camera right away, we would risk positioning it incorrectly. So for example, it might be lying on its side or whatever. And we'll talk about it later. For now, let's add our camera and now let's place it in the very center of the room. Let's set the height to 1200 millimeters. This is the center of our room, give or take. The camera is looking parallel to the floor the direction doesn't matter. The main thing is that the camera is positioned in the center of the room and parallel to the floor. So next we go to projection and VR and select spherical 360. So the panorama camera looks like a ball. And that's what I told you about. If you choose this type of camera and place it somewhere in the room, you risk making this error when your camera is put at 90 degrees in the wrong view. And this will make your render incorrect. So this is why we've added a Corona camera first and only then changed its type. All right, so we've got our camera. It's in the very center of the room. And now we need to set up our render. So we go to render setup and we need to set the resolution Here's the output size parameter. And here we select custom. Then we need to set the width and the height of our render so that the ratio is one to two. Let's set the width to 4,000 pixels and the height 2,000 pixels. The width is twice the height and this is how we achieve the correct panorama. And I think this, uh, with this resolution, the render and the panorama will look good. Should be okay. All right, so next, I'm just gonna press C on the keyboard to switch to our camera view. And here it is. In the view to render field, next, we can click render, but first let's check the settings. We'll go to the scene tab and set 
the noise level limit to 4%. The less the better. The optimal level is around 3 to 4%. All right, so now we can finally click render. And this scene has already been optimized for fast rendering. I used our script to convert all materials to ray switch. To get the script, you can click the link in the top right corner of this video. The script increased render speed by about 25% without compromising the quality, which is good. So after the render is completed, I'm gonna show you how to upload this panorama to present it to your client right away. So we'll look at two ways of doing this. And also I'd like to invite you to our workshop while we're at it. So I made a master class on setting up four different lighting schemes in an exterior scene. And you'll learn a bunch of life hacks and tricks that will help you create a very realistic lighting in your exterior scenes. So the workshop will only take two hours of your time. Two hours and that's it. After that, you'll be able to create very beautiful, very realistic exterior lighting. And it really, it has never been easier. So you'll find the link in the description to this video. And for now, let's go back to the task at hand. So the render took about 17 minutes to complete. The result's pretty good. It's not too noisy. In the center of our render is looking at the corner because this is how I put the camera. So suppose you want to set up the panorama so that it opens up to a specific area of your render by default. For example, this mirror and this table here. Now let me show you how to do this without re-rendering the scene. But first we need to save the result. We can click save and save the scene as a JPEG file. There's actually an even easier way. So by clicking Ctrl C, we simply copy our render to clipboard and then we go to Photoshop. We press Ctrl N to create a new document and then just paste it, paste our render. So now we need to reposition it. And it's very easy to do. We simply click filter and we go to other and offset. And here we set vertical offset to zero. We don't need offset here. As for horizontal offset, we change it until the mirror and the table are both in the center of the frame. Like this. So now we save our image and upload it to online services. For panoramas, I recommend a virtual tool, I'm sorry, virtual tour software called Kula. If you register with Kula, you'll be able to upload at least one panorama for free. And you also get your personal account upon registration. So I already have an account and let's just go ahead and add our render there. So we select upload, create tour, select images. And here we select our panorama, upload it. Actually, let's name it. I'm gonna call it four lessons. 
and click post. Voila, here's our panorama. I'm going to show you how to upload a panorama to your Facebook page. But the problem is, you can't just go and upload your panorama to Facebook. Why? Because Facebook won't identify it as a 360 degree image. So that's why we'll have to change the metadata. And there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to be scared by this word. It's really is just a child play. This is how you do this. So you click file and file info. And you head over to raw data. And here's the metadata of this image. We we'll click template folder, import and upload the file that are linked under this video. So this is the this is preset metadata for panoramas. It's a file in which you need to add your render's resolution. So in our case, the height is 2000 pixels and the width is 4000 pixels. So we need to change the full pano as well. 2000 pixels by 4000 pixels. And cropped area as well. 2000 by 4000. You can edit this file manually in Notebook or you can use settings under this video. All right, so now we're ready to upload our file. So we check this import option and click OK. All right, now the settings have been uploaded. Now we need to save the file. Save as. Select the JPEG format and replace the old file with this one. So here we set quality to 12. All right. Next, let's go to Facebook and click photo slash video and upload our file. And we post it and voila. We have our 3D panorama of our interior. All right, that's it for today. Hope you like this tutorial. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.